uh, stats about COVID-19 up to date and the epidemiology. Right. So uh, COVID-19 disease, um, uh, 2019 disease is a potentially severe acute respiratory infection caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2. Now the outbreak began in China, but has since spread to many other countries. It was officially declared by WHO to be a pandemic on March 11, 2020. Coming to the history of coronavirus, uh, the oldest common ancestor of coronavirus has been dated as far back as 9th century BC. Some studies published in 1990 specified the most recent common ancestors as alpha, beta, gamma, and delta coronavirus. So our uh, SARS coronavirus 2 is uh, 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 from the genus beta coronavirus, right? It's from beta coronavirus and it belongs to the subfamily of Sabicovirus. Right. So, um, and it has, uh, it is very much similar to the SARS coronavirus, which caused the SARS epidemic during 2003, and to the uh, SARS related coronavirus found in horseshoe bats, which were discovered in Hong Kong and mainland China. Now, coming to the symptoms of uh, COVID 19, in symptomatic patients, illness may evolve over the course of a week or longer beginning with mild symptoms that progress to the point of respiratory distress and shock in some cases, right? So fever is almost universal in all patients with a uh, body temperature can exceed um, 99 degree Fahrenheit. The patient may complain of myalgia and fatigue and patient also comes with irritation and constant coughing without expelling any mucus. Um, in case of moderate and severe um, uh, diseases, the patients complain of dyspnea. Headache and gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea are uncommon but may occur. Uh, in a very small percentage of the cases, hemoptysis was uh, also noted. So social distancing and hand hygiene is the key to keep the COVID-19 at a bay, right? So the disease can spread from person to person through small droplets from the nose or the mouth when the infected person coughs or exhales. So these small particles lands on the surface, which means any person that touches the surface and then their eyes, nose or mouth, they can become infected. Even asymptomatic people, see many people infected with COVID-19 show mild symptoms, especially during the first stages of the disease or no symptoms at all. So thus, you can still catch a disease from an infected person who only has a mere cough and does not feel ill. So social distancing is the key. Uh, physical examination, uh, the universal fever, but uh, some patients can be totally asymptomatic and especially patients with at extremes of age and immunodeficiency diseases may not develop fever. Um, uh, patients can come with uh, tachycardia and in case of severe diseases with shock, they can come with bradycardia, anorexia, oliguria, altered mental status. Um, a small percentage of the cases comes with um, uh, uh, dermal problems like mortal skin, petechiae, purpura. Uh, mo moderate to severe disease comes with tachypnea and labored respiration. And some patients have prolonged capillary fill, more than two seconds, or warm vasodilation and bounding pulses. So what to do if you have a contact or travel history, right? So in that case, you have to home quarantine yourself for a period of 14 days. And if any symptoms appear during this period, like cough, fever, difficulty in breathing, immediately inform the nearest health center or call the national helpline number. Coming to the uh, current stats about the coronavirus, totally, uh, the total number of confirmed cases worldwide is 27,25,920 with a total number of deaths of 1,91,061 and uh, uh, recovered cases of 7,45,905 and we have a current active cases of 17,88,954. This is a, a COVID-19 uh, map uh, worldwide, which I got from the Johns Hopkins University website, which is up to date. So it shows here, this is the uh, cumulative confirmed cases worldwide. And right now, these are the number of active cases worldwide, right?
Uh, according to the Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare, uh, as of today, in India, we have uh, 17,610 active cases, 4748 are totally cured and discharged, and uh, we have a death of 718. So this is a tabular column showing the case fatality rate by age of COVID-19, which simply determines the total number of deaths by the number of cases. So as you can see, with increase in age, you can see there is an increase in case fatality rate. So there is so many factors, so many comorbidities, everything coming into play here, right? So this is actually a way um, uh, of showing the probability of dying if infected by the virus. So 80 plus uh, of the uh, 80 plus age population, they have a case fatality rate of 14.8%, while the younger age group have less case fatality rate. These are the five countries with the highest number of cases with uh, United States of America at the first, then Spain, Italy, France, and Germany. Coming to the um, epidemiology, right? So 17 years after the SARS epidemic, an outbreak of pneumonia, now called the COVID-19, was reported in Wuhan, China. Some of the early case patients had a history of uh, visiting the Hunan wholesale seafood market, where the wildlife mammals were also sold, suggesting a zoonotic origin. So the causative agent was rapidly isolated from the patients and identified to be the coronavirus, now designated as the SARS coronavirus 2. So um, what is R0? So the R0 is the reproductive index of the virus. So it shows that it is the average number of people who will catch the disease from one contagious person. Right. So in case of COVID, we have an R naught of 2 to 3.11, showing that one person can infect three people, and these three people can infect nine other people, and so. So you can see that COVID has a, um, uh, its R naught is more than Ebola, which is 1.5 to 2, but it is less contagious than SARS. But SARS, before the absence of any intervention, SARS had an R naught of 2.3 to 3.7. Right, But after the implementation of rapid diagnosis coupled with effective isolation of the patient, the R0 of SARS coronavirus dropped to less than one, which explains why the SARS coronavirus outbreak could be eventually be controlled. Now, emergence of COVID-19. In December 2019, a cluster of pneumonia with unknown etiology appeared in Wuhan city, Hubei province of China. Several of the initial, initial patients visited the wet seafood market where other wildlife species were also sold. So the subsequent virus isolation from the human patients and molecular analysis showed that the pathogen was a new coronavirus, first named as 2019 novel coronavirus, and subsequently this disease was named by WHO as COVID-19. These are the timeline of events uh, from the beginning of the uh, uh, you know, epidemic. So uh, we have phase one, phase two, and phase three, right? In the phase one, see in December 31st, Wuhan reported 27 unknown pneumonia cases. Some had close contact with the Hunan seafood wholesale market, and seven of them were um, serious cases. So the next day, by Jan 1, the Hunan seafood wholesale market was closed. By January 18, after one week, the unknown pathogen was confirmed as a novel coronavirus by China CDC. And by January 10th, Wuhan confirmed 41 uh, cases caused by novel coronavirus and one of them died. So that is the first phase of the epidemic. Second phase of the epidemic, you can see the number of confirmed cases is starting to rise, right? This orange is the number of confirmed cases. So number of confirmed cases is coming up. By January 20th, human to human transmissions were officially reported. And by January 23rd, 10 family cluster infection cases were reported in Guangdong and Wuhan goes into a lockdown. That marks the second phase. Third phase, you can see the number of total death also started increasing, right? So by February 11th, WHO officially named this new disease as coronavirus disease 2019, abbreviated as COVID-19, and the international classification of uh, taxonomy of virus, they named this novel coronavirus as SARS, uh, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, abbreviated as SARS coronavirus 2.
Coming to the phase one, uh, the local outbreak by exposure at the wet seafood market starts started the phase one. So from the first case in December 2019 to the emergence of new cases outside Wuhan by January 13, 2020, a total of 41 cases were confirmed. So epidemiological analysis showed that already in this phase, person to person transmission has occurred by close contact. And in phase two, it started on January 13, marked by rapid expansion and spread of the virus within the hospital. So no so male infection has started and family transmission because of close contact has started. In this phase, the epidemic was, has spread from Wuhan to other areas as well. Now, the first case outside China was reported in Thailand in January 13, caused by a Wuhan resident traveling to this country. Now, already by January 23rd, 29 provinces, six foreign countries has reported uh, 846 confirmed cases, which approximately 24 increase from, the, from that of the first phase. Coming to phase three, it started in January 26, which is marked by increased number of cluster cases. On January 30, the number uh, increased to 244 and reached 9,826 and WHO declared this epidemic as a public health emergency of international concern, right? Um, and uh, of note, February 3rd seems to be a tipping point of the epidemic from which time the daily number of confirmed cases outside Hubei began to decline. So it, it, it might be reflecting the success of the Wuhan lockdown uh, and other public uh, health measures like sanitization or the uh, virus transmission reduced for some other reason, it remains unclear, but I think the lockdown has an important part to play. Coming to the origin and evolution of the 2019 novel coronavirus, the genomic analysis of 2019 novel coronavirus demonstrate a 96% nucleotide identity with the coronavirus isolated from a bat, the beta coronavirus RATG13 2013. So the phylogenetic analysis showed that the RNA dependent RNA polymerase uh, gene of SARS coronavirus 2 is most closely related to that of the one uh, from the bats. Right. However, the region that binds to the AC2, so um, uh, the receptor binding domain of SARS coronavirus spikes protein, so it corresponds to the amino acid residues that was um, uh, taken from the coronavirus present in pangolins. So all these findings suggest that the SARS coronavirus can be a recombinant virus that has jumped two species and come to humans, like from the bats to pangolins and pangolins to Human. So this is based on a study conducted uh, by a microbiologist in, from University of Hong Kong, but still, so uh, these are the genetic proof, but yet to be proven. Coming to the genomic study, all coronavirus rely on spike protein to infect the cells. Unlike the other members of the uh, Sebicovirus uh, Sebi subgenus, SARS coronavirus 2 has a spike protein that contains a unique insertion that results in potential cleavage of S1, S2 junction. This S1, S2 junction cleavage can uh, enable proteolytic uh, processing that enhances cell to cell transmission. Right. Also, the genomic data of the new coronavirus responsible for COVID-19 show that its spike protein contains some unique adaptation. So one such adaptation is its special ability of this coronavirus to bind to the specific protein on human cell called the angiotensin converting enzyme 2. So a related coronavirus that causes um, um, SARS in human also seeked out. So SARS also had a binding for AC2. So um, to conclude, uh, what we have to do is protect ourselves and prevent the spread of the disease, right? Uh, we have to follow uh, proper hand washing, keep uh, social distancing, try our best not to touch the eyes, nose, and mouth, uh, cover our mouth with nose or the elbow or, uh, while coughing, seek medical attention if any difficulty in breathing or fever arises, and follow the directions of the national and local health authorities. Thank you.